Hey, welcome back to the show. It's been like a month since you've seen me. Uh, I've been busy as outside of life and stuff, so I haven't really had time to work on the shop. Uh, but we have a little commission to do today. Uh, somebody has requested a 14-inch Bowie knife, so hopefully with all these fancy new tools we got, we can knock it out in like a day or two. So, go on to put my hair up and grab some stuff, we'll get out of the shop and get to work. So, this here is a piece of steel I'll be using to make the uh, knife. This right here is a piece of leaf spring left over from when we built the blue golf cart. Uh, leaf spring, as I said in the last Bowie knife build, uh, is 5160. However, in that part one where I said 5160, I mistakenly said that it's similar to 1095. That is incorrect. Uh, 5160 is more along the lines of 1060 be compared to a uh, time series carbon steel. This right here is 12 inches of fresh, brand new leaf spring. So there shouldn't be any cracks in it or anything like that. It should be a pretty good steel to work with. The overall knife needs to be 14 inches long, so we should be able to draw uh, two extra inches out of this under the power hammer and stuff. So next up is lighting the forge and then we'll get to work.
I heard it. Yeah. Ah, it's really coming down out there. Okay, well, I'm going to have to wrap it up for today. The video's not over yet. I haven't done for the day, is all. Uh, my family's going to be going to dinner before too long, and I need to get a shower, because I can't go soaked in coal and stuff. But, we got some pretty good work done today when the hammer was working right. We got the tang forged in. I got a bit, the startup of a Ricasso right there. You can sort of see where it recesses. I'll be more dramatic once I bevel it and grind that. Got the tip ground to profile, it's looking really nice. Good, it's right about at the 14 inch mark. Feeling pretty good already. So yeah. Uh, catch y'all tomorrow then. It's now a new day and it's time to get back to work, here we go.
so I forgot to film a bit of a conclusion for yesterday, because we sort of stopped and went off to eat, but it's a new day now, so now I'm going to get back out to the shop and keep grinding on that. Here we go. Okay, now that that grinding is done, I'm going to clamp it down in the vise, and I'm going to start striking in some decorative file work on the spine, like I did on the big wedge handle Bowie. So let's get to that then. All right, I'm going to go ahead and shut things down there for today. We'll get back at it tomorrow. Got some fantastic headway done today. We got the flats polished out to their uh, pretty much their final polish because they'll be forge scale. We got the bevels all nice and whacked in. Looking fantastic. Got the false bevels done in. Did a little bit more profiling there on the tang and I knocked in that their file work looks real nice. So uh, that's all for today. So catch you guys tomorrow. And there we go. It's another new day. Back to work. This is educational. Make a torch with your power hammer rag.
this uh, way, it starts to spin. It just goes inside that wall. Alright, we're wrapping up there for right now. Got some more work done. Be back tomorrow though. It's been a full week since we worked, but it's back to work now. Here we go.
last night on a lot of lightning. Pretty cool to watch. Anyways, forgot to film the uh, outro bit for yesterday. However, no too big concern there. The knife spent two two-hour cycles in the oven at 400 degrees each time. All nice and tempered. So hypothetically, we now have a knife that should have no problems with cracking or anything of that sort. So today, I'm going to work on fitting the guard. Let's get down to it. So, due to physics, then I didn't get all the holes I wanted completely drilled. That is okay, I can work with this, I guess. And now, I need to grab a thin file, switch the camera to time lapse, put some music in my ears, and then get to turning these little holes into a slot big enough to accept that tang. Here we go. for quite a while. I obviously have this big file fitting in, which looks to me to be about the same size as the tang at the spot where the guard will fit. However, some spots of the tang are thicker than that, I think, so I need to grind that tang down a bit more than I did already. I need a bloody break. I've been at this for over an hour and a half straight, so taking a quick break. I'll be back in a bit. All right. Oh, shoot. Uh -oh. A lot of technical difficulties here for a moment. I knocked the, the dusty s the knob off the... Uh, Grinder. All right, fix that. It has been just shy of an hour. Let's back to filing then. I'm gonna hold off on grinding for as long as possible till I see a narrow spot right there. Look at those inwards. So, music back in my ears and back to filing. Here we go. 
Finally. Well, that was actually uh, perfect timing because I was listening to Lifetime of War from Sabaton and it hit the chorus for the first time right as a thing clicked into place. Oh my gosh, it's done. Ah, uh, the screaming I was doing on the floor over here with a sweat stain is that. But oh my gosh! Ow! I worked on that long enough to have gone all the way to our lake house. So. I'm not inspired enough to do anything else right now. So probably the conclusion for this day. So catch y'all tomorrow. So day two of this video is finished exporting. So I just need to finish checking that over real quick. It's obviously the next day. After that's done, then it's off to the shop to get to work. Here we go. Huh? Alright. Wow, check out this rain that just showed up. Like out of the blue. And also Betty's back. She'd been in, a sh in the shop getting a uh, new AC and stuff. She's back now, so yay.
Harry Thunder out there, guys. Oh, shit. All right, I gotta do this quick. Uh, I'll just... Where did this storm come from? Lordy. Wow, that hickory dust really gets you. This is looking good. I might have to call us quits for now. Dude, this is insane. That's pretty dang dark over there. Lock there over here, but man. I guess I'll keep working for the time being. Get off of it.
situation report. Uh, I've shut down operations for the time being because I don't fancy getting electrocuted. Um, but I am trapped in the shop now. Because, one, it's really coming down out there and I don't want to get soaked and have to work in these clothes again. Two, I would bring in my stuff. I don't want the camera to get destroyed, and I don't want to get hit by lightning because of the knife and tripod I'm carrying. Lightning is all around, it's really loud in the shop. Uh, <laughs> holy shit. Uh, there's a river wash through happening again right there. Bringing sand with it, going across. Blowing out to the street. Pond is really full, wow. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm stuck out here for the time being without anything to do. Situation report number two. I've been rescued from the shop by my brother and my mom. So now I'm just waiting for the storm to subside some before I get back to work. A bit too much lightning for my work to be playing with metal stuff in a metal roofed building. So, we're uh, just trying to wait out the storm. Go ahead and pick the torch up. Did I break it? Nah, it's fine. So, you I already have this auction valve open, so turn that one on. There's a tiny crack. Maybe a bit less. They're sensitive. You go over that. All right. All right, that's good. So now turn this valve off. And now turn the acetylene off. And now. And now we do the sauce treatment. A bit too hot. Hey Blake, wow. could you do me a favor and grab me in our sauce rag and soak it down pretty good? above and beyond the Call of Duty with that sauce. Yeah. Which is I a good thing, it'll give us a nice black finish. Boom! 400 grit devils. 
All right, folks, I think that's where we're going to wrap it up for the day. Uh, got a lot done, despite that storm. I got the bevels all polished out. We got the guard blackened. That looks fantastic. And I got those sort of shaped. It's really coming together. It's going to look fantastic. So, back to it tomorrow. If we're really efficient, we might just finish. So it's a new day, and I did a bit of thinking and a bit of noticing, so you see this right here? This is fantastic. There's a bit of an issue that you may or may not have noticed. See? What could the issue be? That's so bloody loose. Whenever I ground that, both of them actually I foolishly made the gap a bit too big. And I think that that'll be a problem for glue up because that's a lot of slop to account for. The guard moved all the way forward and these set on there. Look at that, it's like a half millimeter gap up there. And that won't do. I'm not going to sell somebody a knife with a half mil of space filled with epoxy and broken dreams so I think I'm gonna scrap those scales and make other ones and there's another issue with them also look at how big that wave is that came from my hasty hasty cutting of it on the porta band and I think that also renders these scales useless so I can't use them for anything so I'm gonna make some new ones uh, only one thing to do with useless scales. So, to work. So now all I gotta do is just not screw this cut up. Let me mark a rough center line really quick. All right, all I gotta do is not screw this up. Let's see if I can pull that off. so much better it's almost not funny almost okay we got the scales now I'm going to be very very delicately sanding the ends here with this 120 grit belt until they fit very very tightly onto here with the pins in place so let's get down 
to business. Hold on, a pen just went to the shadow realm somewhere. Oh, there it is. that gap worse what in the hell did I do okay never mind they're just sitting funny but a little fix that right up to make sure I put this on the right way. This stuff always smells like a skunk. Now we clamp it up. Alright, now I need a bit of acetone to clean this mess up, so I'll cut you off there. Well, it's been quite a while, it's been over an hour. It all feels pretty, uh, pretty dried. It's still a bit, uh, sticky. But it's not like fluid or anything. So I think it's time to get down to, uh, the grinding and sanding. Folks, I got that sanded up to 400 grit, burnt, and then re-sanded. It's finally time for the sauce. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Now that hickory looks really good. Oh yes. Ooh boy, that's a keeper. Ow, that's hot. There's a bird in here. Wow. Oh, 
Ooh, this looks good. And it's very hot. That really hurts. Oh, yes. Lovely. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there for the day. But tomorrow morning, hopefully early, I'll be coming back to you guys right here to start working on the leather for the sheath. This thing is looking awesome so far. Catch you guys in the morning. There we go. Next day, same spot. Now it's later than I wanted to get to work. It's not the morning, because uh, editing took longer than I was expecting. And then right after I finished editing, me and Blake had to go clean our neighbor's horse's stalls. Uh, so it's currently about 2.15ish. But it's time to get to work and time to start making that sheath. Here we go. Okay, to start off, I'm going to make a paper template of the knife. This will be done by simply tracing the profile of the blade onto a sheet of paper. And from there, I can begin making a template of how the uh, sheath will be. So now that I have the profile traced out, I'm going to take my ruler and measure a half inch out from those lines to establish the size of the sheath. You may have noticed I marked here and here where the guard ends at. And that's to help me out later on in coming up with a cool shape for this sheath. Now that those marked out, we trace pattern out and flared out to the marks up here for the guard. Okay, so I'm looking at this here and I'm thinking that I don't actually like the flares off the sides. You can see originally it would have flared out to the guard like so. However, on a simple sheath of this design, I'm thinking that that simply will not go well. And I'm thinking that I'm going to revise it. Simply go straight back into the guard. So let me do that really quick. Here we go. I think this one will look a lot better. So now, I'm going to cut this out, and then we go down to the floor to start playing with leather. Okay, and now I have the template cut out, and we're on the floor with the leather. So this right here is a sheet of uh, 9 ounce, I think, leather. Yep, 7 to 9 ounce is what we'll be using. So, first thing I want to do is which way the grain runs. It feels like it runs that way. So, we'll go right here with the template, and lay it out. And something very important you want to keep in mind when cutting out your leather is that you cannot lay your template out like this, and then do this, because then your, your leather will turn out wrong. You'll have the smooth out on one side, and the rough out on the other side if you want. What, if you want unless you're trying to get a very crude looking sheath. You don't do it that way. The way you should do it is to flip it like that. That way you get the smooth on both sides or the rough on both sides. And I think it's better to cut from the rough outside as well because usually that is inside the sheath so any errant pen marks usually go unnoticed. There's one marked. Over. Mark the other. And there we go. Now we cut it out. I want to give this tiny little uh, razor blade that my neighbor at the lake gave me 
think it would be quite nice for letter work. It kind of fits in the pocket really nice. You may notice that I left a big gap here and here. That's because I plan on using this material to create the welt, the bit of leather that goes between the two flat bits. <clears throat> Ideally, you'd be doing this on a cutting board. However, I don't have one right now, so this will have to do. There's one down. I'm going to use my usual knife on this next one because I think this needs a bit of a thicker blade for leather, for leather work. Now, really quickly, I want to trace these on top of each other because I know for a fact there's going to be a couple of differences between the two. And I want them to be as close as possible. So a lot of the small correction details can be taken care of with the belt grinder. And I will call that good for the time being. I can correct the rest of this on the belt grinder. I have to throw these scraps away really quick. One. Ah, blue. It's the cat. There's a cat right there. That's why I screamed. I'll be right back with a thing to help check if it fits the knife. Be right back in a moment. All right, the secret thing is off the clamps. Use those to mock up the knife sheath. And you can get a really good idea of how the knife is going to fit inside. Yeah. That hangs under pretty good. It will also loosen up more as it's put in and out more often. I can see that's already a world easier to get in. Yeah, that's good. I like that. So the next step is coming up with a strap for uh, hanging it from the belt loop. These are got a lot of other stuff back there. This should do the 
trick. A piece from a uh, poorly conceived sheath for an iron knife. Here, just marking out the area where I want the uh, belt loop to attach to the sheet itself. Now, I use contact cement initially to uh, connect the pieces of leather together, and contact cement is not fond of sticking to smooth surfaces, so your two options to making it stick here are either to scratch up with a belt grinder or to take your razor and just score it up. So that's what I'm going to here. And now scoring it as simple as this. figure out where I want to punch through for the snap clip thingy. Now I need another tool out of my surprise box. This thingy, rotary puncher. All you do is line it up right here. And go set and go. Now, hypothetically, a rivet should fit through there, and if not, I can punch it bigger. I think I'm gonna put my boots on and go out to the shop and clean this up on the belt grinder really quickly. I'll be right back. Well, the plan was to finish the shoot today, but the minor issue due to poor work, the uh, standard shop stuff like the drill press is inoperational, and I need the drill press to finish the sheath, so hopefully it's back tomorrow. So, catch you guys then. Well, in classic Icarus Metalworks fashion, it is not the next day, it's two days later. So, off camera yesterday, I attempted to make the little strap thingy. I battled all day with it. So you guys watched me make the belt loop, but then whenever I attempted to make the strap, putting the snap rivets on, they came, they went on sideways the first time around, and I couldn't get them back out. So I tried to remove it from the belt loop, and all that did was destroy the belt loop and the strap. So this is the second belt loop and the third snap strap thing. 
spend all day working on such a small part. But it's time to uh, do some stuff. So today I'm going to take the belt loop and glue it there like that. I'll then glue it to the sheath blank, poke some holes, drill some holes, because the power is back at the shop by means of the welding circuit. And then I will stitch the belt loop on and then glue the sheath together and stitch that together. So uh, let's get down to it. next step we have returned indoors to the wonders of AC. So I have here the sheath of that bit glued on and dr holes drilled through to accept stitching. And I have here a little spool of waxed thread and two needles as well as my leather mitt in case I need a bit of brute force. I'll be doing a simple saddle stitch for all the stitching on this sheath and I'll be doing it the way that I've learned. It may not be the best way but it's worked out for me so far, so here we go. Okay, so now I have the thread on the needles. What we are going to do, we're going to first go through right there, not at the very end. Go through like so, and find the middle. I'm going to go back one. To lock the thread in place. And from there, you simply stitch on as you always do. In one side, out the other, then in from the other side, around, and out the other. Case I brought the ladder bit forward. It might get a bit stuck sometimes, so you just grab a hold and yank it through. And just like that. And so you just keep on stitching like that. I do not own a stitching horse or stitching saddle, or they're called, because I do not want to spend a hundred dollars on a piece of pine that I could make myself. So for the time being, I just use my knees. Ooh, I did not get anywhere near enough string. Alright, I need to restart this stitch because I don't have enough strength to keep working. Alright, I will cut this off and put a new string on and uh, go on with the time lapse from there. <laughs> this I got a lot of string I measured out three times my wingspan I have roughly a six foot wingspan which 
then would translate to roughly 18 feet of thread. <laughs> so now I've got to find the middle of this. It's locked in. Time for the time lapse. So now, I got that stitching all done, looking fantastic. So now I'm going to take this little guy called a stitch marker. That's going to run it along the stitch holes, make them look just a bit prettier. Boom, boom, boom. There's that. So now I grab the die I've been using. One of these guys. And this dude. And we stain the edges and burnish them. Here we go. Alright, then got that all burnished out on the sides and stuff, looking real nice. So now, tomorrow morning, I'll put the sealer on it so it doesn't absorb a bunch of water and stuff. And then, sharpen the knife, and this project will be done. In the meantime, however, I think I'll deserve to get a quick look at what this thing looks like in its sheath. It looks pretty fantastic. Oh yeah. I'm gonna skip showing you guys the ceiling tomorrow because it's boring. It's just like putting the stain on but not coloring it so catch you guys at the grinder tomorrow morning.
right then folks, this project is finally done, or finally, it should be all in one video. Probably a long video, but it'll be fun to watch. I am really pleased with how this turned out. I like that strap, even though it took me a day to make. It's a nice tight fit. The knife is absolutely gorgeous. It gives me sort of the vibe of uh, colonial American, like Pennsylvania and Virginia Woods sort of stuff. I really love how the hickory turned out. I love how the scale turned out. The guard, I love just about everything about this knife. In my opinion, the handle could be a bit longer, but since the customer has smaller hands than I do, it should work out just fine. It isn't super razor sharp, but it'll make for a great work knife, which the customer is in construction, so that should go fantastically. And uh, well, it's done. Ah. Uh, now that I know much to say, so if you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing to share future videos and to see how more projects like this one might turn out. And that's really all for now. Thanks for watching. Until next time.